Welcome back to Totally Offensive. I'm Garrick Dieter. Got my bud, Anthony Sherman. And we have a very, very special guest. One of my uh, favorite teammates of all time. One of the uh, best athletes, hardest workers I've ever been around. The Cheetah, Tyreek Hill. The Cheetah in the building, man. Thank y'all. Sherm. Thanks for coming on. Thank y'all for having me, man. It's an honor to be on this show with y'all. I called Sherm yesterday. I'm like, guess who called me uh, a couple hours ago? He's like, who? I said, Tyreek. He's like, uh, I said, should I get him on the show? Sherm's like, yeah, let's let's try to get him on. So Tyreek is still one of my memorable teammates that I will never forget. And I was uh, excited when you told me he was going to be in studio with us and and not. Uh, I thought maybe for a little while I wasn't going to ever see him again. I know. You know, maybe a couple FaceTimes when he would FaceTime me in the gym or something like that. But that was it. I feel like I haven't seen you since you left. Sherm, I don't know how to take what you just said. You said Tyreek is one of my most memorable teammates, like like it, like I just passed away or something. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean you just I just don't see you every day anymore. So I miss you guys. Well upset. Man. I miss you guys a lot though. Yeah, hey, I don't think I've seen you since uh the last game, the Bills game. No, Bengals game. Right? I, I don't I was uh, football camps. Football camps. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. You did those football camps last year. That was a good time. You coming back, doing more football camps in Kansas, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah tell us about I'm, those. I'm doing, I'm doing some more football camps in Kansas. Uh-uh. <clears throat> so, uh, I believe June 23rd, we, we got one in Olathe. Um, then I got one in Wichita, which is June 24th. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I feel like this is where it started. You know, I, I got a real connection here, you know, um, with having kids and just being a part of this community. So, yeah. I think that was one of the cool things that going to those camps last year. I didn't do much work, but like just seeing the amount of support that Chiefs fans and and parents have for Tyreek is. I mean, those every camp was over five hundred kids like line line through the door. And that's what makes the Chiefs kingdom great is yeah. yes. is once you're once you're a chief and you're always a chief and and they're always going to support you in anything you do, and uh, it's exciting to to see and and maybe I'll come out to the the uh, one in Olathe and yeah, you got full hang around and no, probably not, but I, I can give some support to some running back I coaches. Mean, we can always, you know, we can always grow a, a kid into a fullback because Sherman wasn't always a fullback, right? You yeah, had to play running back, right? That's true. I don't know, but well, that's, that's the argument I keep having is like fullbacks are just a dead dead position. Like Sherman was the last of a dying breed. Like he just, he just <laughs> went to two teams. That, he, he was with the Chiefs. We had a fullback. Man, man, finna go with stink. And then he went to Miami, and they have a great fullback down there. You saw what they did to the fullback from the Chiefs. Now that man's gone. Oh, went to the Broncos. They're not yeah, signed anymore. Well, I mean, that could be a, a topic we have when it when it happens in the season. I mean, they're I don't know. Fullbacks, we'll fullbacks, dead, dead position nowadays. I'm just saying, most of the playoff teams carry a fullback. I'm just going to say, San Francisco has a fullback. Yes, a real Chiefs good fullback. had a fullback. Real good fullback. Miami had a fullback. Come on now. Buffalo had a fullback. Come on now. Patriots have a fullback. Dead, I mean, dead position, the, buddy. The Ravens, like you, the Ravens have be, a fullback. I told you this before. Like you should be take, you should take that as a compliment. Like you were the last one. Like no, the last I mean, there's real some. There, that, no, know. no. <laughs> but like Sherm walks through, like he walks in the room, like he'll be like, oh, that dude play fullback. Yeah, so right like, or wrong. Sherm is like I, I ain't gonna lie, Sherm. You like like I said, you kind of built different than our fullback in Miami. Our fullback in Miami, he kind of like built, a hybrid. Yeah, he's yeah, a, a he's hybrid. A, he's a hybrid. You like I mean, old like Mike Allstott. Old school. <laughs> yeah, old school. Yeah, you old school Mike Allstott. Yeah, I'm good with that. They don't make them like that. That anymore. was my first jersey growing up, Mike Allstott jersey. Forty. Forty. Come on, Hard nose. There's guy. nothing better than seeing his highlights on I Instagram. Needed, I needed a neck roll. That's all I needed. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why you never rocked a neck roll. Because I, I don't really, I mean, Tyreek, would you ever knock or rock a neck roll? Yeah, bro, I used to rock a neck roll in middle school. I used well, to play, like now, like you should do it for like training camp, like the big. You should get the what was that DJ Alexander? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that flat yeah, piece no. of wood behind your back, <laughs> your head. I need that, and I need the Justin Tuck face mask. Thank you. So then I look like Ray Lewis. What you think? I mean, in a dark visor. Give it a shot. Come you, on, uh. you never know how it's gonna happen. So looking back at your time with the Chiefs, like what was kind of the most memorable uh, year in your opinion? Uh, definitely my rookie year. You know, um, I feel like that was the first time I, I really had a chance to make a name for myself, obviously. And uh, yeah, I just feel like the guys I connected with. You know, obviously you wasn't on the team yet, um, and just the relationships I was able to build, and then just having that moment on the football field when the fans was going crazy. The, the Oakland Raider game when it was like Tyreek, mm-hmm. Tyreek. You talk about oh, chills yeah. and just 
that 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 moment right there was like the moment where I feel like you know I, I kind of came onto the scene to like make a name for myself, mm -hmm. man. Because as a kid, like you grow up, you know, imagining doing these things, you know, in your backyard, you know, jumping on the trampoline, making those big plays, right? You know, and here I am, you know, my rookie year being able to do that, you know, in front of thousands of people. I mean, they they chanted Tyreek, and he took it to the house. Yeah. Bro, he took that that punt return to the house. No cap, bro. I think I cried, bro. I think I cried, bro. Like that that was that was kind of like what was always fun. Whenever Tyreek would go back a punt return, every single time, Chiefs fans, the Tyreek <laughs> chant goes, and it's like you know something special is about to happen. Well, I remember, I remember his first <laughs> practice with us, his rookie year, and I was standing next to Eb, and he caught like a flat route, and he completely ruined. Every defender's angle, and EB looks at me and I said, uh, "That's special." He goes, "That that is not that's not speed you see ever yeah. on a football field." And Crazy. it was it, everyone had great angles for a normal person running, but when Tyreek took that ball and went up that sideline, angles were gone. Your best at was just run to the end zone and maybe you catch him somewhere down there. <laughs> when you come into the Chiefs and they draft you, obviously you play more so running back in college, and right. they draft you as a receiver. Right? How does that like when you come come in? How's that kind of translate? Were you kind of nervous to to play kind of strictly receiver? How long did that take? Because obviously the the rookie year is hard in Coach Reed's offense to to learn things and to yeah. be a really productive receiver. Well, um, you know, my whole life I played running back and receiver, but you know. My primary was was running back, you know, and like you said, when I got to college, it was kind of the same role, you know. But when I, once I got drafted by the Chiefs, you know, my only obligation to the team was, you feel me, do whatever I can to make the, to just help this team win games, you know. Um, I, so when I took my visit with the Chiefs, I met with the special team coordinator, uh, Dave Tobe, shout out to Coach Tobe, and we had a conversation. He was like, man, why do you think you the man for this job? You know, and I told him, you know, I was like, look, once I take one to the house, the guys around me, they're going to want to keep blocking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because guys want to feel that. Like, guys want to feel – like, guys want to continue to feel that special feeling of being able to say, man, I was able – like, I was a part of that. Having that, an impact on the game. You feel me? You feel me? So, like, I was like, look, I'm going to go in. I I may not be the best receiver, but I'm going to go in. I'm going to work hard. You know, people – Nobody can take that away from me, and I'm going to make this team as a returner. And that's what I did, you feel me? I was a Pro Bowl punt returner, all pro, I believe, punt returner or whatever. Special return specialist. Yeah, Jaylen I was going to say, said, yeah. Return specialist. Shout out to that. my teammate, man. Shout out to my teammate. I feel like that's like the first time that term really came about was like you, like return specialist. Nobody really knew what that was until Tyreek made that a thing. And then it's like nowadays people think that's like disrespect. Yeah, like it's guys, not. it's like, bro, if it's you're not. a specialist at anything – you oh. should take that as like the highest yeah, compliment. If your name is you specialist in it, that means you're Come really, on. really good at what you're doing. Exactly. Like, like I was like a good teammate specialist. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah. you need you need I'll some guys like a glue guy. I'll give you that. Like yeah, I'll come good. in, I'll get the guys going, like make sure everybody's right. Yeah. yeah. It's different, man. That's what my time with the Chiefs was. Obviously, a lot was depending on your health, my playing time, and I always look forward to backing you up because I knew how special you were and getting in those practice situations where I'm running your plays and doing everything Tyreek does, I realize, like, how in shape you have to be, how hard you have right. to work. Otherwise, you get to the game. And that's why I never I never really understood how you got to this a, a certain level in a game where you're literally running full speed every single play. And people don't realize, like, when you're doing motions, when you're running routes. It's, tough. it's hard. It you're, running, hard. you're running 10 seconds full speed every time, and you have to come back, 20-second rest, go back play after play you're playing 70 plays a game where did like the hard work and your I guess skill set kind of set in is it was that something that you just always had uh just mindset dog I, I just feel like if people understand you know where I come from and just who I am as a person and the people I was raised by man you know life wasn't always easy for me you feel me so I feel like God has blessed me with this amazing opportunity so why let it go to waste? Yeah, that's why I never understood. It was like you're in this awesome opportunity, to just, and all you do is is work hard, that's grind it. it out, and that's, that's something it. that like Eb, Coach Reed, 
those guys did an awesome job of staying on guys. It's yeah. like they're gonna get on your nerve too. Yeah, they're gonna do that, but like it's in the best interest, and it's people don't interest, people don't bro. realize that. It's like everybody wants you to be the best person, the best player, and that's something I think Coach Reed and EB really did a good job of. Is yes that high expectation of no matter who the player was, mm-hmm. they wanted the expectation level up high. Well, they knew. I mean, they knew how talented he could be, and if they could get it out of him, how special our team would be. And for any of those guys, it's like, yeah, I mean, people, you know, joke about how EB stays on everyone, but as a as a player, I know you respected that because yeah. it wasn't Big like time. it wasn't he was just staying on, or he never talked to Tyreek or Pat or Kelsey or anyone, and all he did was harp on the younger guys or the the little, you know, the guys that weren't playing. It was he was the same way with everyone, and, everyone. and he just demanded excellence, and that's what we were trying to get every day at practice, every day in a game. Obviously, you're not going to get there, but if you, you get excellence, you're going to get perfection. So that's that's what we did as a team, and, and Tyreek was a perfect example of that. When when you get a guy out there running as much as he's doing and he's not taking a break, as a younger guy, you look up to that and you're like, well, you, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, he, he's doing it. Why yeah. can't I do it? He set the, he always set the example and set the hey. bar high for all the receivers, and that that's something like all the young guys. It's like, all right, you see the best receiver on our team, best receiver in the league doing things at a high level every single day. He's not taking days off. He's not taking reps off. That translates down. It trickles down to the younger guys like, all right, this is what I need to be working on every single day. I need to really yeah. grind this out. With, with that being said, is, is there anything you do uh, preparation-wise to get your body ready to go every day? Is there cert, cert, I don't know, different training met- methods or, or something like that that you do that, that prepares your body to withstand a Coach Reed offense or an NFL game? And stay as healthy as you have been. Oh, so, I mean, so during this time frame right here, off season, what, which is what me and my trainer call like uh, the phase one for us, you know, I I just all, all I really do is just lift weights and just condition. But um, after OTAs is is when I really like start to crank it up a lot, and I be I begin to get in my into my like two a day phases, and even like. Um, I train like three times a day too, though. So that requires like yoga, weights, conditioning. Uh, I may do some pool it, um, drills or whatever, you know. So it definitely gets hard, you know. But this is the life that I always wanted. Like as a kid, like you, I, I can call my mom, I can call anybody in my, in my hood right now, and I can just be like, "Hey, man!" Like if there's one thing you remember me, you know, saying as a kid. What would it be that, and then they just say you wanted, to, you always wanted to play football, mm-hmm. you know. So, like I'm living my dream, so why not work hard? So every off season, I try to crush my body, you know. I try to, I try to take my body to, like the last, like how hi, hi, however much I can get out of it, I'm gonna do it. You feel me? That's awesome. So, that's the biggest thing too, though. And, and my dad, man, like my dad always told me because my dad, he was like. He was my mentor. He was my everything. My granddad, by the way, he was my he was my everything. He used to always tell me, "Reek, practice like think of practice as like the appetizer mm-hmm. or the entree." You feel me? Like it's getting you ready for the, the like what's really good. You feel me? Like what's really good is the game. The game is the dessert. Yeah. You feel me? Like we all want to get to the game, you know, right now, but we like we got to get that build up towards the 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 dessert, you feel me? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put that work in. The entree, then you gonna have the game. So if if we work hard, that's gonna get us prepared for Sunday or w- whenever you play. Yeah, like that, a lot of guys gotta get that in their head, man. That was like Coach Reed's whole thing was like practice is gonna be harder than than the games, and yeah, that was a fact for sure. Like we would be dying in practice. We same running, way in Miami too. Though. Yeah, we'd be running hundred hundred plays a game, hundred plays of practice, just just out there, just grinding it out. And when you get to the game, you're ready. You feel good. When you look back your last couple of years with the Chiefs, you really kind of took off as a receiver. Uh-huh. How much credit do you give Pat, Kels, Coach Reed? Um, you know, I feel like being a receiver in the league, you have to have key guy. Yeah. You have to have guys around you. It's, I mean, yeah. there's there's not one player in the league that can really just do anything that they want. You have to have those key guys. How much does those guys really? help you out as a player? Well, I give a lot of credit to those guys. You know, those guys are all pro guys, Hall of Fame guys, you know, them, themselves. You know, I feel like having Kelsey on the field at all times definitely helps, you know, because he gets doubled, mm-hmm. he gets tripled, you know, and 
he's a uh, he's a de- defensive coordinator's worst nightmare. You feel me? So and just having Pat, you know, he's a guy who can make every throw on the field at every angle. Mm-hmm. You know, at even at any given situation. You know, so I'm definitely you know grateful to have those guys and definitely grateful to have played with those guys because you know I, I feel like I mean. When I came into the league, I, I had J Mac for a very short time, and you know I, I really didn't get a chance to learn right. how to play receiver. But having Kelsey around, you know, he really helped me out. You know, taught me a lot of things. So I'm very grateful for for both of those guys. Yeah, being a good teammate goes far, and those guys I think did a good job, and you do an awesome job of like you're not scared. Like if a guy's better than you, okay, come take my spot. But you're yeah. not scared to help the young guys out. How important is helping those young guys out? The guys with no experience on the football field in the receiver room at any position on the field. That's I mean, to me that was one of the biggest keys. Like you see you see Pat, you see Kelsey, you see Tyreek, they're teaching guys yeah. the plays, they're teaching techniques that help them out. And then you see some guys that don't necessarily want to help out like that. That stuff, that stuff goes a long way. You can see, but you can see that with with the way you know when we did have the preseason set up the way it was. Like when Tyreek wasn't out there, he was the he was almost on the field, mm-hmm. cheering on his guys and and wanting them to succeed and do well. Like if you're if you're a player, like your whole goal is like, especially for an organization, is like set that organization up for when you're not there. Right. Like you're you're always gonna be. You're always going to have ties to that organization, and for him, it's the Chiefs. And like he set some of these younger guys up. That's how it should be to help to help them succeed now. And this is what we're seeing when he's not here: is that these guys are still running the same route, and some of them were trying to be like Tyreek. I mean, they're not not watching the film of when Tyreek ran these routes because he was the perfect example of that. So if you if you had to, you know, what your honest opinion on what you think the Chiefs need to do uh, this you know, during this time now at, for receivers? Uh, shoot, I, I feel like, man, the Chiefs can win with just anything, man, for real, though. Man, That's you, what it seems like. You got one of the best – you got the the best quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You got the best tight end in the NFL. You, you feel me? You and got you, Coach Reed. And then you got one of the best offensive court, uh, offensive play callers in the, in the league, man. Mm-hmm. So, you feel me? That That's a good – Tink, tang with the wang right there, man. They, like they can do whatever they want to, man. Yeah, with it, they, you feel me? It's a do. very special team. Yeah, they they can they can plug and play and really do a good job because Coach Reed is. I mean, he's so smart with moving guys around. And exactly. I think as long as you have one guy, like if if it's either yourself or Kelsey on the field, I think his offense is going to work no matter what. Because no he, matter what, he does do a good job of just complementing pieces no matter where they are. He does a great job. Uh, so so. I'm I'm just getting off like now thinking about your time in Miami. Uh, how, how are the facilities down there? Oh, facilities are a plus I because know. I know this was a big topic for yeah, NFLPA. NFLPA, NFLPA yeah. report came out, and you know you were in two places, and we had talked about Gary and I had talked about just the the not the new facility that you're in. But just that old practice facility that we went to when you talking we were, about in Miami in Miami oh, when terrible. we were there for the Super it was, Bowl. It was terrible. But I'm talking about just that locker room, how nice it was. And it wasn't even the brand new facility, so I, I'd I'd like to know how that that new facility is. I know we saw it when we were going for the Super Bowl, how they were building it across the street from the stadium. Like, how is that? The new facility is dope, man. Um, just everything inside is great. Food is great. They got they got chefs all the time, um, and it's great, man. Training the training room is beautiful. The indoor f- facility is beautiful. All of that is nice. Is there is as a player? Do you feel any more loved from the owner with nice facilities? Because I know we had talked about this briefly about like, oh yeah, as a player necessarily. I mean, when you're winning, you still games, go to the Chiefs. You want to feel like, like you're kind of rewarded. You're you're gonna go to the Chiefs because you want to win football games, and, right? And the facility could be what it is, and it doesn't really necessarily matter. I my, I would say my only thought was that a player would feel loved by the owner if they've got brand new facilities and brand new yeah gear and, yeah. and all that stuff i didn't know if that if that made you feel any different no nah, it, it don't make me feel any different you know because i feel like my job at the end of the day is not to worry about the things we have around mm-hmm. you know like if we want those things all we got to do is just win games you know and then we will have a voice to change what we want right was there a uh, cultural difference like you know how the chiefs were like it felt like a family like we all we all yeah. felt very close everybody yeah. loved being around each other when you go to Miami 
you're on a new team. You don't yeah. necessarily know these guys personally like you did. I mean, you were with the Chiefs for six years, so it's like you build relationships. Were right. you kind of nervous to go there yeah. and kind of start over? Yeah, yeah. At first I was, but then, um, you know, um, I had like one or two friends on the team already, and um, they kind of like introduced me, you know, once they had like a, a, a party or whatever in Miami and all the guys were there. And it kind of broke the ice right there. You feel me? I, I fit right in with the guys. Jalen Waddle, you know, he's he's one of my closest teammates. Tua, obviously, the quarterback. And um, some of the some of the rest of the guys, Xavier Howard, I'm cool. So at first I was nervous, but once I got in that, like once I met him at the party, we got it inside of the locker room. It was just like we was at the barber shop, baby. We was having a good time, cracking jokes. You know, I was beating him in Madden in 2K. Yeah. It was like, hey, this dude good at everything. You are pretty good at everything, come basketball. On. I'm, I'm like, bro, like, come well, on. All right, now we're going to talk about basketball. What do you think of the national championship last night? The national championship? Well, I don't think UConn should have won, bro. What? I'm sorry, bro. What, what do you think? Who do you think should have won? The only other team they played. I'm just saying. I don't <laughs> think It wasn't a very much of a game. I'm just going to say. I'm going to say that, and then I'm going to also say that let's go LSU, even though Caitlin Clark is a dog. She is a dog. She's the uh, – I mean, she's the only reason I watched. Like, Same. The only reason, like, I knew even a national championship was going on. Yeah, she she was uh, she was fun to watch if you were going to watch some women's basketball. She, it was definitely uh, entertaining. She could shoot it from anywhere. Um, the way she dished the ball um, to her teammates was really fun to watch, you know, different different ways, kind of very similar to what, what the uh, great point guards in the NBA and in college basketball do. Um it was it was fun, but I mean I, I'm still riding high on the UConn victory last night. So well, congratulations, I mean, Anthony. Yeah, congratulations. Saying, we have more, We're very proud of we the, have the more, man you are. We have more ch- national championships than KU. Oh, so for all the listeners out there, just so you know, UConn. Let's go right Huskies. now. Right now is it's a better running. better Huskies. basketball program, but that's all right. So you go from some co- from Coach Reed to McDaniel. Obviously, two offensive guys. Right, are right. they similar? Like, how are they similar? Different? Like, Coach Reed's obviously been in the game forever. He's he's knows everybody. He's got that coaching tree that just goes throughout the NFL. Yeah, he does. You got a fresh young mind that's first year head coach. Were you? What was your excitement level? I would say going to Miami, playing for somebody that was. You know what's crazy? As soon as I, soon as soon, soon as I got off the plane in Miami, you know, after I had signed my deal or whatever, he shook my hand. He was like, "You ready to go for 2000? I was like, "Whoa." I mean, I was feeling good. I was like, oh, oh, 2000, <laughs> a Calvin Johnson record, 2000? Are you talking about something else? So, yeah, I, I was definitely excited, man. Um, and then, like, you know, I, 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 I already knew that Jalen Water was was a special talent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I kind of watched their offense, you know, when, he, when uh, he was in San Fran and the way they used Debo and the way they used Ayuka or whatever. And I was like, bro, imagine, like, I was just imagining myself inside of that offense. Right. You know? And and here I am, seventeen hundred yards later. Are plays are the plays pretty similar, or is it like a, is it completely nah, different it's, terminology? It's different completely too. Completely different terminology, you know. And believe this or not, I, I struggled with it for like the first the first week. I say I struggled with it, but then like you know, first week of the season. No, nah, the first week out of oh just being OTAs. There. I struggled with it, you know, because. You know, when, when I, you're in offense for six years, yeah, like, I, it's like you don't have to pay. You don't really don't have to pay attention to like, OK, we got the, the day one plays coming exactly. again. Like We know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. You go to a new place. You're like, damn, I really have to learn all this over again. And but, like, but I was motive. I was I was really smart. like motivated. I was like, OK, I'm going to learn these plays, you know, because if you think about it, everybody had to learn right. the plays, mm-hmm. you know, new coach, first system. Everybody had to learn the plays. So I learned the plays terminology way different. And it's. And like once you learn it, it's easy. Like I'd be two or two, two or still be calling the play, and I'd be already lined up. Right, man. it's crazy. That's always a good feeling when you're like you, he starts calling it, and you can finish the play for him. You get out, you know what you're doing. You don't have to think at all. You can just play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think people realize like how how difficult it really is for someone new to come in and learn a play like a whole system. Mm-hmm. What well, if if you, you know? So you've done kind of both now, but you've had. Would you consider coming in during the season, if you would say you get traded during the season and coming Ooh. in and learning, would that be easier or harder? Because my mind is like, all you have to learn that first week is what's in the game plan. And yep. it's not that whole, yeah, you know, I, I don't know how not big the playbook plan. in Miami is, but like Coach Reed was like one of those big three ring binders mm-hmm. and it was full by the end. Reed, that dictionary. <laughs> yeah. So, 
it, would you think it would be easier to come in during the season or when you did to learn the plays and execute? No, I, I think I came in at, at a perfect time because if I would have came in during the middle of the season, I probably would have, I don't know. Let me not say that. I'm, I'm, I would have been like, look, whatever y'all give me, just give it to me, baby. I'm going to learn it. You feel me? Were you moving around uh, positions kind of like? No, nah, I played Z the whole time. Okay. The same thing I played here. So they put me at Z, mm -hmm. and they and they put J-Dub at X. Because I thought I was going to play X. Right. Because the X is the guy. <laughs> he, he, got, he got a little shimmy. That's like right. a traditional, like, yeah. old school receiver. Yeah. Like, if you're the X, you're the big dog. Exactly. But it's kind of different now. Like, those positions change so much. And Man. everybody's interchangeable, it seems like, on offense. Were you, were you guys very inter interchangeable? Like, yeah. did you guys? Yeah, yeah. So we changed. So some plays, he was the X. Some plays, I was the X. So we changed. So you're gonna learn not just one position and one route tree. Like but you've got to learn all of it. It's all the same terminology, though. Yeah. Like in that offense, it's all the same terminology. So he may say X, dango, Z comeback, or some crazy stuff like that. You know, like you just got to know what comeback is, and you just got to know what dango is at the at the time. So we'll go back and check on uh, your kind of like that last few months of being with the Chiefs. You're yeah. going into free agency. Or you weren't even a free agent. You were still on a contract. I still looking for teams. a. You were still yeah. You were still on a contract, looking yeah. for a new contract. Yeah. What was this the decision like? I remember I was kind of involved because I felt like I was like the middleman. Like some guys didn't have your numbers. They were hitting me up. I was talking oh. to you. I felt like I was on the inside. Yeah. That whole situation and obviously leaving Kansas City to to go to a new place where you've had so much success in Kansas City. You have a quarterback. You have a head coach. You have everything that you've kind of brought up on. You've only been on one one team. Was that decision hard? Kind of walk through that whole decision making process. Well, uh, the whole the whole uh, idea came about, you know, um, towards the end of the season. You know, right at, right after the Bengals game. You know, my agent reached out to me. He was like, "Reek, are you ready for a new contract?" And I was like, "Man, you know what? Um, let's see what happened during the off season, and we'll take it from there." So. A few guys signed. You know, Christian Kirk yep. had got his his deal. I forgot what, what his deal was. but It was something crazy. Yeah. It was, Christian Kirk had a crazy deal. So I hit up my agent. I'm like, okay, we don't see like, what's going on. Because so. he, he got his new contract. He was making more money than you were making at the time, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So he – It only makes sense. He signed a deal, and, like, he surpassed me. And I'm like, bro, I love to compete. Like, I, I compete off the field, and I'm going to also compete on the business side of this too. Yeah. So – I'm not going to let Christian Kirk have a higher contract than me, bro. I'm not. I'm just not, D. You only play for so long. Like, that's what That's what I never understood on, why man. people will get mad if you're taking a contract somewhere else. And, like, yeah, the Chiefs were going to give you a decent amount, but, like, when the Dolphins are giving you $40 million more than what man. the Chiefs are giving you, how do you, as any, as any person, no matter how loyal you are to an organization, that's a lot of money. Now we're talking business. That's setting your family up. That's setting everything up for for a long time after football. Like exactly, football players don't play that long. Like ten. I mean, if you make it the Sherm, like Sherm made it ten years. Like that's that's a crazy. That's amount a great of career. Yeah, average is what three years, two and a half years. Yeah, NFL is not for long. That's what we need to put in our heads sometimes because, like, I like I get it as a player. Like mm -hmm. we get caught up in just living our dream every day. Like man, I'm in the NFL. Like right. and we don't think about the business side of it. You feel me? I just now started thinking about the business side of it when I got drafted to the Dolphins. You feel me? Like, now I'm looking at the other side of it. At first, I wasn't studying no contract. When, when I signed my first contract with the Chiefs mm -hmm. my, for that 18, I wasn't studying that. I wasn't even, I wasn't even paying that attention, bro. Right. I was just like, cool, sign whatever, bro. I just want to play. Yeah. But now it's like my eyes are open. I'm, I'm older. You yeah, know? once I feel like once you get older, once you're kind of in, in the league for a while, you see how the business works. Like, Man. you really see – I mean – there really is no loyalty at the end of the day. Like teams are going to do what they have to do to win games and, yeah. and and make the right decisions. I mean, you like that's what Coach Reed kind of comes in and at the beginning of the year, or end of the year, can't remember what when the meeting is, but he always is like, "This is the last time this group will ever look like this." And it's like it takes you a second to realize what he's talking about. And it's exactly. like you get to the next year, and it's like, "Oh man, like Tyreek's gone, Sherm's gone," and I'm like sitting in there. I the only thing I knew was like. I got Tyreek, I got Pringle, I got D-Rob. I go in the next year, there's nobody there. There's nobody. I'm like, damn. None of the guys there. This is so much different. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy, man, how it is. Watching the uh, the Super Bowl this year, how was how was that? 
did that tear you apart? Kind of walk through uh, that nah, whole whole so, deal. So I was in uh, crazy. I was in Tokyo, Japan, watching the Super Bowl. You know, I went over there. What time was it? It was like it was like in the morning. It was like at six a.m. Tokyo. Uh, so I don't know, time change. So I was watching the Super Bowl, man, and I was just real like happy for my guys. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Even though I'm not, even though I'm not a part of it, I, I still feel like I'm a part of it. You feel me? Um, watching Pat Kelsey win, watching C- Coach Reed get another Super Bowl ring, you know, to add to his ama- his amazing yeah. head coaching career, you know. So it felt good, man, to watch the boys win. Yeah, it, it's that's that's my thing too. Is like I got cut a bunch of times, but like. You still really love like the I people still love like, my guys, that you were though. there with still every day, dealing with like those coaches, those players. It's always a good feeling to to kind of see them have success on the field. And but but it takes it back to what you said earlier, though, guys. Like like we got to see the business side of it, right? Bro. Like no hard feelings towards what's going on over mm-hmm. here. You feel me? I still love y'all. I still got major love for yeah. y'all, baby. That's hey, I'm right no, there with I mean, you. I never blamed you. I also think. That's the Chiefs, and and for for all the teams that we were a part of here, we genuinely liked everyone in the locker room. Like we really enjoyed each, our time together, mm-hmm. and that's what makes it special. Because I don't I don't know, I was with two teams, and I'm not saying that I wasn't like that with Arizona, but like when I left Arizona, I was like, all right, I'm here, and I didn't really care what Damn. happened. I was only there for two years. And I was a rookie in my second year, and then we got a new coaching staff, and and a bunch of people were gone. And I got traded here, so I was excited to be a part of Coach Reed's uh, team and and be be a chief and be in the Midwest. Um, But, I mean, for for the Chiefs, I think they do a great job of bringing guys in the locker room that get along, Mm -hmm. and and you really cheer. Like like you said, like I, I was excited for the Chiefs, like, I had some of my Chiefs gear on. We went to the pep rally down at the uh, Power and Light, and yeah. it was it was awesome just to yeah. be a part and just actually to see how excited the city. I mean, because when you play, you don't you kind of stay in your your zone. You stay yeah. in your bubble. Yeah, you don't get to see the stuff that happens. You in the, don't in see the the, all time, the stuff yeah. that like the pep rally and how many people are down there and how yeah. excited everyone is uh-huh. for that. And then you know that night they win. You got fireworks going off everywhere and. They're very was, passionate. Yeah, you know, it's awesome, but it's like that's that's what is cool now that I get to see that side of it being done and, and just seeing how excited the the whole community gets around an organization. The Chiefs Twitter is very passionate, and we I say that because every time the whole offseason, all you saw with trending was Tyreek, Pat, Tua, and it's like y- all your comments about Tua, it's like, what are you supposed to say? Like you call this, he's you call him the most accurate, and he like he, the bro. dude is accurate. Like, bro. what's the big deal? I I never understood it. Like, you always gave Pat his credit. Like, Pat's the best in the league, he's but clearly the best. Tua can put like I've I've caught from Tua before, and it's like every ball is right where you want it. It's a nice easy spiral. It's like what's the big deal? And Chiefs fans will kind of blow hey. that out of proportion. You want to know? <laughs> hey, funny story about Pat, bro. You remember in the locker room when uh, I was sitting at my uh, at my locker and Pat mm-hmm. threw that ball and hit me in my face. <laughs> I was so mad at Pat, bro. Didn't he, didn't he shoot you with a uh, dart <laughs> yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, he shot me with a dart, bro. <laughs> he shot me right in my face, bro. I think we were texting about that uh, a couple months ago. That, hey, was, that was so funny, Pat, man. bro. I know you're gonna hear this, bro. But I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna beat your ass, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna beat your ass, bro. <laughs> no, that that was funny. Speaking about locker room guys, Chris Jones, you think uh you think one, you think the Chiefs should sign him back? And two, do you think he'll sign back for the right number? I don't know, man. Chris, I mean, Chris stay in Miami and the way Miami <clears throat> passing money out right now. Who knows? He could be in Miami, recruit. baby. He's recruiting. <laughs> I'm recruiting Chris Jones to the MIA, baby. He's a he's a generational talent. It's like he, for sure. Like you see what he can do when he turns it on. That guy's out of different levels. It'd be any organization would be lucky to have him. He's one of those guys like you love to be around. You remember in the Super Bowl, like <laughs> <laughs> funny story. We got a funny story. We, we <laughs> I walk in the uh, was it his room? Nah, your room. Yeah, it was my room. I walk man. in the Tyreek's room and these guys are playing Madden. And Bruh. I'm not necessarily like a, a great Madden player, but I love to compete. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, all right, let me play Chris one on one. So I start playing Chris, and I think oh. I take an early lead. <laughs> yeah. And bro, I'm. I'm like I'm, the TV I feel like I'm, small, yeah, I'm mind I, you. I feel like I'm rolling. I'm like, all right, I, I feel good. Like Chris, like I'm about to beat you. And Chris is well known for being pretty good at Madden. 
So this dude, Chris, like he literally just like starts stepping in front of me. Like I can't see the screen. He started blocking the TV. Blocking bro. the whole. I'm like, Chris, and, I'm and like, like, he getting mad at him because he was like, bro, I can't see the TV, bro. And like, what am I supposed to do? Like Chris Jones is 6'5", 300 bro. pounds. <laughs> bro, me and Didi were finna jump Chris in there that day, bro. <laughs> we was finna jump. Bro. <laughs> that was so funny. He, but he really did. Uh, Yo, he was one of those guys that you love messing with because oh, yeah. he could he could take it and dish it out with the best of them. Oh yeah, love Chris, man. Chris is definitely a locker room guy, a very fun personality <laughs> to be around, like Dieter said. And yeah, any team, I, the Chiefs better sign him back. I ain't gonna say any team. The Chiefs better sign him back. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, I think they will. I think uh, he's made it very public that he he wants to stay in Kansas City. I think they're gonna work through some things and. And get him the money that he deserves, and and is rightfully so. So, we'll see what happens. Um, we got we got draft season coming up. Ooh, who uh, I know, I I know people think that we we know more than what we do because we played or we're on on a team. But if just throw it out there, what what do you think Miami? Needs in the draft? Do they have any draft picks? Yeah. I know they traded them all for you. Yeah, we we got some draft picks. So we got second round pick. That's all I know. We what got. do you guys? Th- what do you think you need? Well, obviously, we got rid of our tight end. Mm, that's true. Went to the Patriots. Patriots. And there are there are some good tight ends in this draft. So you think you got the kid from Georgia? You got the kid from Utah? You got the kid from Iowa? Who's good? Buddy from Georgia is kind of nice. Notre Dame's pretty good too, right? There's a kid from Notre Dame. Well, I don't. Good. Meyer or something. Like I that. don't think the dude from Georgia. He was the backup tight end. Yeah, but they're. Their starting tight end is like probably a top five pick oh, when he sure. wants to come out. So for sure. Brock other, Bowers, yeah, Brock nice. Bowers. The other dude nice. was really nice too, though. Washington, I think his last name. Yeah, was Washington. He's like six eight. He's huge. So you're going with Miami <laughs> with a yeah Miami with a tight end, tight end or a linebacker, S- linebacker. What do you because think? we don't we don't got no inside linebacker. He went to the Steelers. Sure, be coming out of retirement for linebacker. We need a linebacker. I mean, I'd love to play linebacker. That'd be fun. <laughs> There's no way. I can see Sharon playing linebacker, bro. I mean, look at who got inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Who? Zach Ooh. Thomas. Ooh. He was way more athletic, though. I'm not saying I'm more athletic. Bro, I'm just you, saying built the same. If you see Zach Thomas now, you wouldn't think that he played linebacker. He's short? He's short. Really? He's short and skinny. Yes. Why do I think he was like 6'5"? Bro, I no. thought he was big, too, bro. No. You, got, what you he guys wore, didn't watch football back then. I thought he was huge, too. What did he wear? He wore like 54 or something like yeah. that? Yeah. I, I, I think he's, what, Five, five, ten. Yeah, he's not tall at all, bro. You got Teddy Bruschi, same type of guy. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you can, I can do it. That was I back, mean, I get to just, I, I've told, I, I used 80, to joke. Though. I remember you used to joke and say you wanted to play uh, on defense every once in a while. And, and oh, Garrett bro. used to do the same thing. I mean, I have gotten a snap at safety Man, no, in the NFL. No way. There's no way. What? No, there's no oh, way. Oh, yeah. When? Against the Chargers back in when they played in San Diego. I don't know if you, either one of you were on the team, but there is there is footage out there of me playing safety one play in the NFL. We gotta, we gotta get somebody iPad and pull this up. That's like Colin Sanders playing linebacker. I'm no. What I'm saying is like it. That'd be fun just to be like that guy no, goal line situation. Colin, Colin really played linebacker. I know. Though. Yeah, he did. Colin's it, an athlete. It, he, that would be fun to like is. go back to your high school days, like play both sides of the ball. Just oh, to I see did what in you high can school. do. I didn't high in school, the league. Played, in the league, just to try it. Like, what if there's one game a year where you had to flip roles. You had to play defense, and then the DBs had to play offense. No, think about I, I, the fun. way That'd I looked fun, at right? it. The way I looked at it is like Pro I want to be like short yardage goal line, the Mike Pro line. You just want to stick your nose in there. Well, if, especially if they have a fullback, it's like because I know what. So what if it stinks? I know it stinks going against like being a linebacker coming down. Like all, all you right, want to so do is just blow it up. Your linebacker, Michael Burton, plays for the the Broncos now. He's fullback on the other team. You have to get through him. Are you doing it on oh, the no, one yard I, line? Yeah, I'm causing a pile up right there. Right. Might even make, I might even I look, put it this way: I might even make the tackle with his body. He's front running now. Yeah, I'm just running. saying that's that's my mindset. That's how I'm going in there. That's what I'm going to try to do. No, I believe it. Playing I believe linebacker. It. So you're going to this is what year eight for you? Year eight, baby. Year eight. How many more years do you think you can play, I'm or going, do you want to play? I'm going for ten, man. I'm gonna I'm finish out this contract with the Dolphins, man, and then I'm gonna call it quits. You know, I want to I want to go into the business side. You know, um, you want to be in the coaching too, right? Yeah, but not for long though. Like I want like I want to do so many things in my life, bro. You want to come back and help help us coach me and Gary coach high school football? Can I bring my boys? Yeah, oh yeah. I bring I will bring the uh, little cheetahs, the little soul runners. <laughs> so hey, me. listen. So now we got. I mean, we're we making a, a team, good buddy. strong. 
Strong push for a gotta, really, really well coached team. We got to right. travel the world, though, bro. Soul Runner, can Soul Runner sponsor us? Yeah. So, what's your number one after football business idea or kind of goal after football? So, I, I really want to get into like the gaming space. Like, I really want to get huge in, in that. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm using my platform, um, creating the gaming team, um, which isn't lunch yet. It should lunch by the end of this month. And yeah, I'm just gonna sign. Is it Soul Runner? Yeah, Soul Runner Gaming. I'm, I'm gonna just sign like different content creators, different athletes, you know, and um, and yeah, I just been working at talking to different sponsors. You always like did that. do a good job of kind of marketing yourself, doing putting yourself in all these spaces that you really do have a passion for. Gaming being the one. Well, I was gonna say if people want to support Tyreek and, and Soul Runner, how how do they go about um, getting some merchandise? It's pretty good stuff. I, I'm. I'm looking at a nice sweatshirt right here. Um, yeah, that's my boy Wilvin over there, man. He got the sweatshirt on. <laughs> yeah, he's representing. I see you, it. You do a lot of merch now. Glasses. Yeah, we do shirts. a lot. We do a lot. You man. do pop up stores too. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot. So um, I'm, I'm gonna give you some little insight on my on, on my little business side of Soul Runner. So last year we we hit six figures, easy, passed it, easy, surpassed it, easy, and um, so this year was the year that um, I was like, okay, we're going to add some more essentials, some more items, some more sunglasses, and see if we can cross the seven-figure mark. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to start boosting our ad revenue. Uh, we're going to sign some, some, some content creators, see if we can do, do some collabs with, with some people, and see if we can, you know, up the business a little bit more. So Yeah, like Sherm said, all the stuff is cool. I think that's what – that's why it sells. One is, I mean, obviously they're supporting you, but two, it's like actually cool stuff. You see a lot of merch that's kind of like, eh, I probably wouldn't really wear that or use it. Your stuff's practical. Your stuff's pretty awesome, but it's got to be authentic though, man. So yeah. if you guys want to cop that, make sure y'all go to the cheetah, the cheetah socials, or you can go to, to the soul runner socials and that's easy. It's at soul runner. Soul runner is S O U L runner R U N N E R on every social. And if you want to support soul runner gaming, just add Soul Runner Gaming to the end of it. You know, we real huge on TikTok, so check them out. TikTok plug. Thirty million views in the past in the past ten days. So we've been going crazy, bro. Come on, I'll check it out. I'm a TikTok guy now at night. Just the, yeah. al- the algorithm gets me. Yeah, you've like been you've been with Juju. Day. You would you you've check, been with Juju. Check him out so now. like, check him out. You been with Juju Smith Schuster. So he got check him out. He, he got you. With that, that man's feeling good right now. Juju and Pat, bro. Before you really start <laughs> feeling good, we're gonna. Uh, we're going to thank you for taking some time out of your day. I don't want to leave, Greg. I don't want to leave, Greg. We, we appreciate you uh, just coming through. We know you got a busy schedule. Um, we wish you nothing but the best in thank Miami. You. Thank uh, you. Moving forward, you know you always have the support of us. I got uh, one thing to say, though, before I go. Go ahead. Chiefs Kingdom, when the Miami Dolphins come to Arrowhead Stadium this year, guess what we going to do? Guess what we going to do? I hate to say it, man. I hate to throw up the peace sign against y'all. I hate to do it. But guess what? I'm going to be y'all worst enemy that day. I'm going to be y'all worst enemy hey, that day. We'll, we'll, we'll edit that out. We'll just, you better we'll just change, get rid of that. You better and we'll change, just, we won't even let anyone hear that. You better change the signals. I know every signal y'all got. What if Sherm comes in like, arrest you on the sideline? <laughs> like, what would you do? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's one way to take him out the game. Like, that might be the only I mean, way. We, right, listen, they, 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 work for hire. Work for hire. Just let me know. I'm people. playing, bro. I'm playing. Wow. <laughs> Where, no, I this is I remember, I remember my buddy, um, you know, this is when I was in college and I was, I was a Patriots fan because I grew up 15 minutes down the road and he got drafted to the Colts with Peyton Manning. And uh, I used to always joke with him and uh, tell him, hey, I want you to have an unbelievable year, a great season, a great career. But whenever you play, whenever you played the Patriots, I, I don't want you to have a great game. I don't want you can have a great game, but don't win. So, so I'm going to tell you this now. I hope you have an unbelievable season. I hope you do a great job. You have a great game against the Chiefs, but just it's not enough to get that victory in Arrowhead. I'm sorry, Sharon, bro. Yeah, we'll we'll cheer, we'll cheer you on. Y'all coming to the game? Yeah, I'll wear a. Uh, I got a I got a cheetah jersey. Yeah. Authentic Ravens fourth and twenty three play. Remember that? Yes, yeah, sir. No big deal. Do you have a cheetah jersey? I don't, I don't think so. I don't. All right, man, fellas. Don't. Thank y'all for having me. Thank you for coming Thanks on. Thanks for coming and, on, uh, Do yeah. I get paid for this deal? Yeah, we got you. All right, man. Yeah. Let's go. I got your breakfast. Remember, you take oh. care of your breakfast. That's what. It, that's okay. how. It's budget. Oh, you got a budget. So right I'm now. worth fifty dollars. 
Uh, it was more like 25. See, look, that's why I left right there because y'all don't understand Thank my you. value, Thank man. <laughs> Chiefs fans don't understand. Chiefs players don't understand my value. It's the cheetah, baby. I'm out. Peace.